Hi, I'm Greg from Omen Foils. Today I want to talk to you guys about the stink bug start and how this very cool sounding technique can massively improve your enjoyment and progression in wing foiling. So the premise of the stink bug start is that it's very difficult to balance on a sunken wing board while you're trying to manipulate the wing before you're under power. So the stink bug start is a technique for building a frame of support on that wing board and using the wing to get everything in position and then immediately getting under wing power to minimize that time spent balancing on your knees and manipulating the wing to a few milliseconds. So we're going to look at this technique from a number of different angles to ensure that no nuances are missed and that the first time you take this to the water, you can get that perfect practice. I'd really encourage you to take your time at each step and work on the balance there. It's made to, to be a smooth and easy technique to replicate. You shouldn't be rushing it. So if there's a lull in the wind, it's a great time to kind of hang out in that position and feel it out and improve your balance there before rushing to the next uh, sequence. The exception of this, of course, is moving your hand from the board to the wing. This has to be done quickly. That's the whole point of the technique. But other than that, um, spend the time to work out your balance in each position. So this video is really gonna focus on getting from being submerged to on your board and we'll save most of the wing pumping and getting on foil techniques for a subsequent video. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna hop on my board in a straddle. I'm gonna get my lead hand to the front handle of the wing and then grab the nose of the board with my rear hand and lead elbow. Then I'm gonna get into a kneeling position and quickly transfer my hand to the back handle of the wing. And then I'm just pumping up onto foil like you would on any other board. So you're going to climb onto the board in that straddle position and if you've got a relatively narrow board like the flux this is actually a really comfortable spot to hang out and wait for a gust get your front hand on that front handle the other hand on the nose of the board you can drop your elbow onto the board i'm scooting my hips back here and i'm going to use my feet to lever my knees up onto the board from here i'm just waiting for that gust again and then when it comes, I'm going to really quickly snap that hand onto the handle. And now I'm supported by the wing. I've got some flow moving over the foil, so I'm a lot more stable. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of pumping when there's not a ton of wind here. I think a lot of people make the mistake of pumping before a gust happens instead of uh, and burning your energy when you should be going 100% um, when that gust actually hits. All right, same thing from the other side. I'm sitting on the board like a surfer, get my front hand on the front handle, back hand on the nose of the board, drop my elbow down, scoot my hips back. Now I'm nice and stable. I can even use my shoulder into the wing and kind of pull that wing down to create extra support. When I'm ready, I snap that back hand onto the back handle. And now I can support my body from the wing and there's flow moving over the foil. So I'm nice and stable and I can pop up on foil. Um, in most of these clips here, I'm using the 40 liter flux, 1050 operator front wing, and a 4 meter Ocean Rodeo AA glide wing. I'm 185 pounds plus, um, you know, 5'4 wetsuit or whatever I'm wearing here. The conditions were pretty light for this setup. I would have liked a 5 meter wing or a bit bigger board, but it serves as a good example of what's possible with the stink bug start. All right, so here's a really key angle. Get on the board in a straddle. I reel the wing in, go for that front handle and get my hand and my elbows on the nose of the board, scoot my hips back, feet up on the deck so I can bring my knees up. I'm really stable here um, with the wing in the water until I decide to snatch that back handle. And you can just see as soon as I get under wing power, the stability of that board and foil system just completely changes. So you can see here I dunk the board um, instead of climbing onto it. I do this for a couple of reasons. It's lower energy and it also saves your harness hook from hitting the rail of your board when you're climbing up onto it. Nice little trick with small boards. The thing to pay attention to here is I want you to look how that board climbs to the surface. As soon as I get under wing power, 
you can just see it's creating its own lift. Um, it's, it's too slow for the foil to create much lift. It's really the board doing the work there. So here's a shot of how the technique looks on a bit bigger board. In this case, it's the 60 liter flux. Um, I repeated each step a couple times here. I thought it would look, <laughs> I thought it'd be helpful, but it kind of just looks dumb. Anyway, I get my hand and my elbow on the deck. Um, and then, yeah, you can see how I, I hook those feet around and then bring my knees up. So I find this is really helpful for boards like this that aren't like a deep sinker. They're that kind of semi sinker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Switching the, the hand from the board to the back handle and then standing up and under wing power. I'm, I'm quite underpowered here with that four meter. Um, but anyway, I, uh, I make it work. Here's another angle with the 60 liter flux. Um, I won't go too deeply into this. You guys know why I'm doing everything at this point, but check out the timing of how I stand up. I won't go again deeply into this, but um, I'm standing up front leg and then back leg immediately. I keep my stance really narrow until I'm up and riding comfortably, and then I'll widen it out at some point when I'm comfortable. A big consideration when selecting your first sinker board is that in marginal conditions, the difference between getting on foil and not is generally, can you get the board from being submerged up to the surface? And you should think about the board as just a big low aspect wing under the water. The flow over the bottom and the top of the board is what is driving it to the surface as soon as you have a little bit of power in your wing. So a board design with this in mind, with features like a wide tail, clean release edge, and a deck uh, similarly designed to do the same is gonna make it substantially easier to get that board to the surface and really lower uh, the light wind ability of your sinker board. So most people think of our boards as being narrower and longer to be more efficient through the water and better for touchdowns, which is true, but the other aspect of that is it makes this technique a lot easier and more comfortable. So, the narrowness is really nice for straddling the board and it's easier to move your body up into that kneeling position. And contrary to what you'd think, having a narrower, longer board, having the volume distributed that way, using this technique, it's actually easier to balance on. And that's because as soon as there's any sort of water moving over the foil, you get so much stability from that foil, you really don't need the left to right balance from the board but having a bit of extra length out front and a bit of size and length out the tail, you get that fore and aft bounce, which I find is critical. People are often scooting out the back or falling forward, not so much side to side if you use this technique. So that's something to think about for your board. Longer or narrower is not just more efficient, it's also easier once you start using this technique. If you can pull it off, a two board quiver is really sweet. So what that would be for most folks is a light wind specific board and then your everyday sinker board. So in sizing, I wouldn't necessarily go as small as you can go. I think 60% of body weight is a really good rule. So for a 100 kilogram rider, that'd be a 60 liter board. For an 80 kilogram rider, that would be a 48 liter board. And if you're really athletic or really skilled, you could size down a few liters. And for somebody who's not as athletic or not as experienced, you could size up a few liters from that. So that gives you number one, you know, two great boards to use depending on the conditions. And then as well, sizing it to that 60%, you've still got good low end. So if you travel um, or you're getting into prone foiling, you've got a great board that you don't necessarily need to have that second board with you all the time. So I've been using this stink bug start technique, regardless of the water, wind conditions, or even what size board I'm on, just because I found it such a high success rate. Getting better at water starting is gonna make you a better foiler. And that's for a few reasons. Um, obviously it's nicer and more pleasant in your session to know you can get up quicker and more consistently, but the big payoff is gonna be that you're gonna push the limits further. And I think this is what progression in foiling and really any other sport is all about is pushing yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone. So you're turning harder, flying a little bit closer to the surface, and you're gonna be a lot more willing to ride like this more aggressively if you know getting up is really easy and fast. 
Remember that motto, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I'd like to leave you guys with a challenge. So during your next session, every time you get on a wave and flag out your wing, don't come back under wing power, except that you're gonna ride it out until you come off foil and fall. So this is gonna give you a huge improvement on your ability to read waves and pump. You're gonna be shocked at right away how often you're relying on that wing when you actually could have used the ocean energy or your pumping energy to stay on foil and keep going longer. As well, it sets you up for some deliberate practice and repping out that stink bug start. So basically just two things, staying on foil until you fall and accepting you're not gonna use that wing to recover and then doing the stink bug start, deliberately building up those frames, getting that really consistent practice in. As always, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know in the comments if this video was helpful for you or if you've got an alternate technique for starting sinkers you think works better. Question for the audience is, for those of you who are already playing with sinkers, what's the smallest board you've been able to water start as a percentage of your body weight? And then what have you landed on as your kind of go-to everyday board that you like the best? For those of you who are not on sinkers yet, I'm interested what your ideal board is and what's holding you back from getting there.